Hello, welcome to the tutorial on how to make a fabric marker tote bag. We will be drawing this monster design onto a blank canvas tote bag and using fabric markers to outline our drawing and to color in the monsters. You can use the stylish tote bag for day-to-day -day tasks like grocery shopping or as a book bag, or it can also be used as a creative gift for someone like a teacher, parent, or a friend. Let's get started. For making this tote bag, the materials we need is a plain, undecorated fabric tote bag, your fabric markers, which will be used to color and outline the monsters, a piece of cardboard. You can cut this out from a cereal box or any cardboard box you have lying around. We will put this in between the bag while coloring to ensure that the markers do not bleed from one side to the other. You will also need a pencil, to lightly trace the design first before going over it with marker, an eraser in case of mistakes, and a ruler. The first thing we want to do is make sure the bag is nice and flat along the table so that we have a nice smooth surface to work on. Then we'll use the ruler to draw a box to frame our design so we know how big to make it. Be sure not to put the design too close to the bottom because when you put things in the bag, the bag will bend and you won't be able to see that part of the design. So I will start about this much away from the bottom to draw a line for the frame or for a box. I will use the size to align the ruler. Draw two lines going this way. This box is where I want to draw my design. The first monster that I'll draw will look like a slug and I'll put it in the bottom corner. So I will first draw a round bulbous head and then a long tail going to the right. And connect them down here with the squeaky line. Slug, I will give it eyebrows that are just a few lines and circular eyes and a big smiling mouth. some antenna because its head looks kind of bald right now. The next monster I'll draw will be beside the slug around right here. I'll start with a squiggly line for the head and body. Symmetrical line on the other side for the other side. So here the head isn't quite the right shape that I want, so I'll erase it. And you can draw the monsters however you like and give your own creative flair to these, but this is just the way I'm drawing them. So this one will have round eyes as well. And maybe rectangular 
pupils and a small smiling face. And I'll draw in a circle for its stomach, but I will color in a different color than the rest of the body later. This monster I'll also give hands and feet. And this one will be waving. On this side, I'll draw a fuzzy circular monster and leave some space between these two monsters and this one. So this one, I plan for it to look like a hairball. So first I'll draw a big circle. I'm going to this slightly with the pencil for now. And then to give it a fuzzy look, I'll add jagged lines around it, starting from the top. This is now beginning to look more like a hairball monster. And then its face I'll draw like this. And give it a zigzag line for our mouth. And then this one might not have arms, but it could have really long legs. And since there's more, since these are monsters, maybe this one will have four legs. Now, in between these two monsters, I'll put a rectangular shaped monster. And its head looks kind of big, I'll draw in a monster that looks kind of like an ice cream. Or a scoop of ice cream. Right now we have our first row of monsters. In the row behind these monsters, I'm gonna put a dinosaur looking monster behind the slug and this one, but in between them and have a long swooping back. And then a pointed snout. spikes along its back. And 
and then the eye. A short stubby arm like a normal T-Rex. Now on the right side here, I will draw in a monster with two large horns and a big body. Stripes along the horns. Now, above this monster we just drew, we're going to draw a cloud shaped one that just floats in the sky. Now here we're going to draw a monster with a long neck that swoops downwards. First we'll draw the head, which will be just an oval shape.
and then maybe on its neck, we'll draw in another monster that looks similar to this ice cream one, but with jagged line on the bottom. In this space between all of these monsters, I'll draw in a lobular monster that'll have a body that's just a squealy line. So I'll give this one circular eyes. Final monster that we'll draw will go in this corner. We'll draw a UFO slash alien looking monster. First I'll draw a dome. And this is gonna be the head of the UFO. And then for the body, I'll draw it looking like a spaceship. monster will draw. Now that we have finished drawing our design, we can start using our fabric markers and outlining all the pencils mar pencil marks we drew. We can use the black fabric marker to go over it. Be careful as these fabric markers take a while to dry, so I'll be starting from the top left and moving downwards into the right so I don't smudge the ink over at the bottom of my hand. If you're left-handed, you would start at the other right top corner and go downwards, so you don't smudge the ink. Since it takes a while for this ink to dry, we will leave this for one to two days. This will allow the ink to dry 
and then prevent the ink from smudging when we go over it with other colors. It will also prevent this black ink from contaminating the other markers. Now that we've finished outlining and have put the black ink dry, we can work on coloring in the monsters. Again, I will start at the top left corner and make my way towards the bottom right to avoid smudging. If you're left-handed, you would start at the top right corner and go towards the bottom left. I will also try to use the lighter markers first to avoid dirtying these markers with ink from the darker markers if I go over the same spot. Now that we're done coloring, we have to wait for the ink to dry. If you look closely at the alien, you'll notice that some of the blue ink bled into the orange one. And this happens if the ink doesn't dry before you use a different color over another. So we're going to wait for the ink to dry and then fix this. To hide where the blue ink bled into the orange one, I'll just use a black marker and outline around the spots where it bled. And I'll do, I'm doing this after it dries so it doesn't bleed more. And there, all done. And once all the ink has dried, your bag is now ready to be used. This tote bag can be used as a reusable bag while grocery shopping. You can also use it as a lunch bag or even as a book bag for books when you need to go to school. And that's it for the tutorial. I hope you had fun and bye-bye.